The first two storylines of Dragon Ball Super, which were the Battle of Gods and Resurrection F arcs, received a not so solid reception, to put that lightly. Many fans criticised the arcs for being overly stretched out, providing little to no tension or originality, and for the lack of concrete direction and a healthy production schedule, particularly on the animation side. However, for all of the complaints these arcs have garnered, there is some gold at the end of a shit rainbow, and the nugget we will be talking about today is on Dragon Ball Super Episode 6 from the Battle of Gods arc. While not as panned as the Resurrection F retelling, Battle of Gods and Super was mediocre at best and had a lot to be desired, but Episode 6 is honestly one of the most well-directed episodes in the entire series. Helmed by Morio Hatano, the episode takes place on Bulma's birthday cruise ship and revolves around Vegeta's efforts to keep Beerus even-tempered, doing so out of fear that he will destroy the planet if he is irritated. In the first part of this episode 6 analysis, I will be focusing on the introductory scene on Bulma's ship. The remaining sequences in this episode will be discussed at length in separate parts, in separate videos. The episode's premise is simple and it was displayed in the Battle of Gods movie, but the way that the events unfold in episode 6 and the direction is pitch perfect. After Goku has a brief talk with Kaio about the danger of Beerus, it cuts to a shot of planet Earth. Typically in the Dragon Ball franchise, any shot of a planet is rather still, except for it spinning and having a tiny zoom, but in episode 6 it zooms in far with the water directly in the centre. Not groundbreaking by any means, although it is a sweet addition. The shot transitions to another establishing shot of Bomber's cruise, surrounded by great looking water and sunlight effects. The episode continues with the gang enjoying Bomber's birthday party. Since Super is a television show and they have a limited time frame to animate these episodes, especially early on, the director shows several camera techniques to make the party seem more lively. The first shot includes Chaozu and Marin running across the ship, with almost everybody in frame, but far in the background. This gives us a small taste on the distance between characters and it even gives us an indicator that Roshi is up to no good. The scene cuts to Roshi and the girls up close, as he is looking over their shoulders. Bomba states that she doesn't even know what to do with Vegeta not attending the party properly, which is exposition about events to come in the episode. However, it doesn't come off as a mere explanation, as she is talking to Chi Chi, 18, and Panchi in a casual manner, and while also distracted by Roshi quickly moving left to right. Furthermore, the sequence moves to Goten and Trunks playing at the shooting gallery, with Roshi and the girls still in the frame. With everyone in these shots, the party seems more lively without having the best animation schedule. All of these interactions are only a few seconds long, they don't go too quick so we are left not knowing what happened, but not so slow paced that we want the episode to hurry the fuck up and get to the point. Every one of these moments are brief snapshots of the party, which perfectly establishes a friendly social setting before we get into the dramatic stuff, the meat and potatoes that is Vegeta attempting to make Beerus satisfied. The way that all of these moments are framed, edited, and put together is another story. That's just simply brilliant. Moving on, the next encounter that we see is Tenshin Han, Pua, and Ox King watching Krillin and Oolong have an eating competition. One thing to note is that in the Trunks and Goten shooting gallery shot, we see the backs of Tenshin Han and Ox King, yet again making the party feel more like a real party with everyone doing a separate thing. On the flip side of this, we see Goten and Trunks continue to argue in the eating competition shot. Very nice attention to detail there. Furthermore, Gohan and Videl share a small romantic scene together on the edge of the ship. She leans in closer, and they smile at each other. Simple, yet extremely nice. The scene cuts to Yamcha and Piccolo training while Dr. Brief is eating noodles. Wait, I'm glad that Whis and Beerus didn't catch him eating it, or else Vegeta wouldn't have been trained. Thank goodness. Anyway, Piccolo doesn't seem to be too thrilled to be training with Yamcha. I mean, look at that facial expression. The second to last little scene within this bomber cruise ship opening sequence is the Pilaf gang eating a healthy helping of food. Not much to analyse here, it's just a minor appearance and ultimately they aren't relevant in this arc. The sequence all comes together when there is a cut of Roshi getting ready to poke Bomber's uh, drink glass. 
She starts to swing her hand in the direction of Roshi's face, but before she hits him, the scene transitions to Vegeta punching the wall out of fear, anger, and anxiety. I enjoy how this whole sequence comes full circle, beginning with Roshi and ending with Roshi. To conclude, the introduction of Bulma's party in episode 6 is fantastically crafted, and Hatano has done a stellar job directing not only this scene, but the entirety of the episode as well. Stay tuned for the second part of my Dragon Ball Super episode 6 analysis and review. Please make sure to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you later.